Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and welcome to part two of our series on the Green Cloud module. In this video, I'll show you how to improve our setup from the first video and we'll end up with something like this. So let's load up our project from last time and talk for a minute about how the grain cloud module works. So first off, a grain is just a short snippet of sound. And all of the inputs to our grain cloud module are defining certain aspects of that grain of sound. So last time we set up the pitch, the position, the amplitude, and a sample selector. But the really powerful part of the grain cloud module is the cloud, which allows you to layer many grains on top of each other and create more texture and soundscape type sounds. And to see how many grains you can have layered on top of each other at once inside a grain cloud module, you can check the function tab of the properties. And it's the little box called overlap. So we have access to 32 grains at once here. And the inputs to the grain cloud that control how many grains are playing at once are the length input and the distance input. If we hover over both of these with our mouse, you'll see that they both have a default value of 20 milliseconds, which means that each grain will be 20 milliseconds long. And when it starts, uh, there will be a 20 millisecond timer till the next grain begins. And what that means is we'll never have more than one grain playing at once the way that things are currently set up with default settings. So to fix this, let's first create a length knob by right-clicking and choosing the Create Control command. I'll set a step size of 5 and the style to Knob in the View tab of Properties. And in order to set up the distance between grains, I want to divide the grain length by a number and that will that number will determine um, how many grains are playing at once so if we divide the grain length by one there will only be one grain playing at a time if we divide it by five we'll have five grains playing at a time so that can have a value from 1 to 32 and we'll name it overlap all right so let's hop to the panel view and do a little bit of rearranging and make sure that our setup is still working properly. And unfortunately, being able to change the number of grains and the length of the grains um, is not in and of itself that exciting, but it is a step towards where we want to go. Alright, so we're ending up with a kind of tinny metallic sound right now, which I don't love. And what's causing it is all of our grains are pretty much identical, except for the position input, which is changing. And in order to get something that sounds a little more dynamic, we want there to be some variation in the different grains. So fortunately, there's a bunch of inputs to the grain cloud module that are designed specifically for this purpose. And these are the jitter inputs. So we have the pitch jitter, uh, position jitter, the length jitter, the distance jitter, and the panning jitter. And so whenever a new grain is created, the jitter values will be used to in introduce a little bit of randomness into the grain. Um, so for example, if we create a pitch jitter knob by right-clicking on the input and using the create control command, 
whatever the value is selected by this knob will be the range of randomness added to the pitch. So the higher the value, the more randomness the pitch will have. So um, the maximum value is 3, so that means the maximum amount of deviation from the norm will be plus or minus 3 for the pitch. We can also use the create control command on the panning jitter. And if we leave the pan itself disconnected, that means all the grains will just be uh, panned to the center. And then by turning up the jitter knob, we will be able to create a amount of randomness um, in terms of whether the grain goes to the left or right channel. In order to set up the grain length jitter and the uh, distance jitter, I like to use a different method that involves multiplying our original value by a knob ranging from 0 to 1. So we'll take the grain length and multiply it. And what this allows us to do is when our jitter knob is turned all the way down, then we'll have the uh, grain length at its normal um, regular interval. And when we turn it all the way up, then it'll range anywhere from zero milliseconds to double whatever the knob says. So this just gives us a good, easy range to work with. And I've turned the picture for the knob off so we can just kind of layer it right beneath the parameter that it's affecting. And I'll use the same setup to um, affect the distance jitter. So take the distance time and multiply it by our knob, and done. So the more randomness we can add to these various parameters, uh, the more we'll be able to move away from the kind of robotic sound we were getting a few minutes ago. So one of my favorite sounds that we can get out of this is the good glitchiness when we're uh, turning the select knob. And so I kind of would like a way to change the select on its own. And in order to do this, I'm going to use a clock oscillator, which you can find in the oscillator menu. And I'll use it to trigger a randomize module, but we'll have a few uh, modules in between the two as well. So I'll have the clock restart on a new incoming MIDI note using the gate module, and I'll give it an amplitude of one. And we can see from the diagram on the oscillator module that it's a pulse wave um, going in between zero and uh, whatever the amplitude's set to. So I'm gonna use a separator module to filter out all of the events that are equal to zero and only uh, let through the uh, high outputs. And we'll use the high outputs to trigger a value which will go into a randomized module the range knob of the randomizer will control the amount of randomization that can be added to the select knob. And so I'll give this a range from 0 to 32 and a step size of 1. Um, and then we just need to set up the frequency 
of our uh, clock oscillator. Oh, and of course we want to add the output of our randomized module to the select knob. Let's create a little space for ourselves here. And of course, if you want to have the randomization here turned off, you can just turn the select random knob that we created down to zero. Okay, so once we have this set up, then we can set up the frequency to the clock oscillator, which I want to be related to the grain length. So theoretically, I want to have it set up so that we could have the select value change after a given number of grains. Uh, so I'm going to take the grain length, which is measured in milliseconds, and multiply it by a knob that will select the number of grains to, that goes by before we change the select value. And this calculation will assume that the jitter is equal to zero because we can't really account for the randomness that's going to be added in. So we'll have it range anywhere from 1 to 16 grains. So that'll give us a time in milliseconds, which we want to translate to a frequency. In order to translate from milliseconds to frequency, we can first take the reciprocal, divide 1 over x, and then multiply by 1,000. So that provides us with a frequency for our clock oscillator. I'll just take a moment to rearrange everything here, and then let's make sure that everything's working the way it should. And it's probably about time to change our instrument to be monophonic. It's not really that useful as a polyphonic instrument in the first place. And you'll see it kind of screws up the grain cloud view. Uh, if we have four voices, every time a grain starts on one of the voices, the view immediately jumps to that voice, regardless of you know whether the amplitude is greater than zero or anything like that. So it just kind of looks a little all over the place. So we can fix this just by dropping the number of voices to one. We'll save ourselves a bunch of CPU in the process. Alright, so we can just get some great soundscapes and sound effects out of this. Uh, once again, I'm using the Twisted Tools Ultra Loop sample map, which I'm pretty sure you can get for free as part of the Ultra Loop demo from their site. So you should grab that if you don't have it already. Uh, once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com, and thanks for watching.